guys, Stu here. So last night I went out and saw what was one of my most anticipated films of 2017 coming into the new year. That film was Logan. Let's talk about that shit. And obviously what this being a film about Wolverine, I can finally do this. <laughs> I was gonna do it with knives like you usually do, but that's downstairs, can't be able to get it. So I'm sticking with pencils. So I'm, you know, I'm Wolverine but with pencils. Slightly less threatening and scary, but I think it still works as a superhero. What's your mutation? I'm gonna draw you. Uh, can't promise it'll be a good sketch. Oh shit, get me away from him! <laughs> Bad guy's running away and just like, Picasso, bitch! Yeah, I don't think that's quite as cool as Metal Blades. But anyway, moving on from whatever the hell that was I just did, Logan is the latest in the X-Men franchise, it's the latest standalone Wolverine film, and it's actually the final standalone Wolverine film we're gonna get with Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, because after this one he is confirmed he is hanging up the claws, so to speak, which really does upset me, but obviously put a lot of expectations on this film to deliver as just a really kick-ass, badass, final Wolverine film for him. And I gotta say guys, coming out of this one, yes it does that. This film did not disappoint me in any way. Ah, oh, just so much goodness to talk about here. Let's get straight on into this bad boy. So Logan is directed by James Mangold who directed the previous Wolverine installment called The Wolverine. And this one is loosely based on the Old Man Logan comics, which I haven't actually read, but I am now very interested to check out. But it basically tells a story of Logan as a kind of older guy, a very kind of decrepit person who's somewhat losing his abilities and just wants to kind of call it a day and be done. But then he basically gets sucked into a whole lot of other shit where he has to help some people out because he's the fucking Wolverine. And in the titular role of Logan, for the final time, is Hugh Jackman. And holy shit, does Hugh Jackman completely deliver everything I wanted and more in this film. The guy is phenomenal here. This is the best we've ever seen Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And he did some good shit as Wolverine. It's just such a different version of the character that we've seen from previous X-Men installations. And that's just so refreshing to see and so interesting to see from a performance perspective as well. Because there's just so much more meat to this version of Wolverine than there has been in previous ones. I mean, it's sort of been building up there with the past couple of Wolverine films. But this here, no, this is... You, this guy's seen some shit and he's ready to call it a day. This is a character where you walk down the street with him and you're not gonna say, hey, buddy, your shoelaces are untied because you'd be scared he's gonna pimp slap you into the sidewalk. And that carries through the entire film and it makes it all the more impactful when we see moments where he actually just breaks. I was so moved by Hugh Jackman's performance here. I loved everything about him. He just, oh, he nailed it. But also in the film is Patrick Stewart, who we know is a great Professor X and he does a great job here. Again, in much the same way, he is a much older version of a previous Professor X character we've seen, and as a result of that, he is a much more weathered, decrepit, he's a, he's a dying guy basically, and I think Patrick Stewart really does bring an incredible emotional core to the film in that sense, and just, I love seeing him, and I love seeing him and Hugh Jackman's relationship on screen. But elsewhere in the film, performances are solid across the board. Stephen Merchant's in a film, somewhat of a forgettable character, but I think he does do a good job of what he's got. The little girl in the film who plays X-23, is that a spoiler? I, I don't think it is, I think we all know that at this point, that it's X-23. But she is badass, like seriously badass. For a character which doesn't actually say anything for the majority of the film, she seriously convinced me that I shouldn't really fuck with her. Like, you see that little kid coming out of a kid's play area and you're like, ah, oh, and then fucking claws come out. She massacres people like, I'm just not going to go anywhere near that, thank you. But the direction is where I really appreciated this film as a very different and refreshing take on the X-Men franchise. Tonally, this film gets it spot on and I loved it. James Mangold did do a good job with the previous Wolverine film. There are a lot of problems with that film, but I actually really enjoyed it overall. And you could almost sort of see the beginnings of an R-rated Wolverine in that film. You know, there were blood on his hands when claws were coming out and he was actually fucking people up. There was one point in the Wolverine, I remember, and that kind of, I think it's the wedding scene or whatever, where he actually does fuck a guy up. Like, his claws go through someone's head and I'm like, this is really what I want to be seeing from future Wolverine films, and it looks like they definitely listen to that, because in this film, oh shit, I mean, it's brutal. It's a brutal film. In the best way possible. I mean, right from the get-go, the opening scene, Wolverine is just slaying motherfuckers left, right, and center, and you see it all. You really do see everything that this guy does to people, and that's just refreshing. We haven't really seen that in a lot of X-Men films, particularly Brian Singer's, where it's just like, slash, 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 no blood, everyone's happy, yay. Like Wolverine's playing Fruit Ninja or some shit. No, this isn't Fruit Ninja. This is, well, people are dying. Limbs are getting cut off left, right, and center. At one point, you see a guy's head get cut off. Like an actual decapitation happened in an X-Men film. 2017, guys. 2017. But that brings me on to perhaps my favorite thing about this film, the fact that it is very clearly a much darker vision for an X-Men film, and I think that is very, very welcome indeed. Things are happening which actually gonna hit you. Like, everything that happens in this film from the story side of things does feel like it has a very real and human consequence to it, 
and that makes it all the more impactful and emotional as a result. I can't really go too much into that point without spoiling anything, but it just it's just things that happen in this film where I'm like, that is actually fucked up and dark. I'm actually feeling quite affected from a human level on that one. And I'm so happy that it was allowed to go R-rated with the tone and vision of this film because it means that stuff can happen in a story which is really quite fucked up and you just wouldn't expect to have seen from an X-Men film. For instance, there's like a sequence in this film well, you know how in films something fucked up happens and you're instantly like, ah, oh, it's a dream. It's a dream, guys. Don't worry. It's a dream. It's just, he's going to wake up. It's going to be fine. Because you know they wouldn't actually go there and do that. You're like, yeah, this is clearly a dream. Well, that kind of happens in this film where I was like, oh, it's a dream, guys. Don't worry about it. It's a dream. Wait, what? And it just keeps going and it's not a dream. It's just fucked. And I think that was the point in this film where I realized... This film isn't really afraid to do whatever the fuck it needs to do to tell this story. It's just showing the story that the director wants to show, which is so refreshing to get from a superhero film nowadays, or a big studio film, because so often or not, you can clearly see studio execs' fingers in there like, we shouldn't do that because it needs to be this way. I'm just really, really happy that the story that's being shown in this film is being shown the way that it is, and that is definitely a testament to James Mangold's vision and talent as a director here. This is easily his best film. This is probably actually one of my favourite X-Men films. The action is fantastically executed from a direction standpoint, but I also really appreciated that this film knows when it needs to take its time going through certain stuff outside of the action, and it's very refreshing to see an X-Men film which does take that time and feels a lot slower as a result, but it feels like an earned slowness. It doesn't feel like, ah, uh, oh, well, come on, let's just fucking get to some cool stuff right now. As a result of that, I could see a lot of people being put off by the slower moments in this film and by the length of this one, but I honestly personally think that James Mangold does a really good job of keeping those slower character moments as interesting as the action and brutal moments there. I absolutely love Logan. I thought it was an incredible final performance from Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. An incredible film to bow out on. I cannot wait to see this one again, even though emotionally it ruined me as a person. And I finished it and I was like, oh. Well, that's how that's going to be then. I'm going to go cry in a corner. So I'm going to go ahead and give Logan a five stars, which is the first five star review from me of a 2017 release this year. So there's that. Yeah! Well done, Logan. You smashed it. But what about you guys? Have you seen Logan yet? I know it's out basically everywhere now. So if you haven't seen it, what the hell are you doing? Go and see it. Why are you watching this instead? You, you're a monster. But whatever you thought about it, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. And as usual, if you like this review and want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe. But until next time, stay beautiful, mother truckers. Thank you.